Hello and welcome to 2K Sports. You're watching the NBA. Saturday night in the NBA. It's going to be the New York Knicks up against Drew Holiday and the Philadelphia 76ers. And now, out to Philadelphia with Kevin Harlan, Clark Kellogg, and Steve Kerr. We've got basketball action at the Wells Fargo Center, home of the 76ers here on 2K Sports. Kevin Harlan here with you on this beautiful Saturday evening. Joining me, Clark Kellogg and Steve Kerr. Welcome to our 2K Sports broadcast. We're glad you tuned in. Take a look at the Knicks. Still trying to find that groove they had last year. They'd like to grab hold of some new momentum and get closer, Steve, to where they were a season ago. When I look at New York, they've had trouble maintaining any kind of positive momentum this season. I think that's why we see them where we do in the standings right now. Yeah, it's been a little uh, disjointed in terms of the, uh, the path this season has taken. A little bit up, a little bit down. You know, but the NBA is so competitive. A lot of great teams out there. It's tough to build momentum. And now the New York Knicks starters. Billups and Fields pairing up in the backcourt. Mello and Amari at the forward slots. And it's Williams at the five spot. And for Philadelphia. Holiday at the one with Iggy at the two. Brandon Hawes down low. And it's Young in at the three slot. Billups against Holiday. He feeds it to Young. Now Anthony defending. Six to shoot. Young against Anthony. But three. Young's shot is off. What a steal for the Knicks a year ago. Finding Landry Fields in the second round. He had a fantastic season. Made the all-rookie team. And a really good all-around player. Rebounder, defender, and can make a shot as well. And here are the 76ers now. Following the miss by Carmelo Anthony. Here's Holiday. Knicks on offense. They're coming off that win against the Nets. And that was a case of shot blocking. Protection at the rim. So important in this game. And I thought that was the key in that one. Absolutely, Steve. I mean, the rejection committee showed up in full force for them this time. Let's go quickly over to Doris Burke for an update. Yes, Kevin. Well, Doug Collins and I had a few minutes to catch up. Coach told me they're hoping to overcome the problems a player like Carmelo Anthony presents to defenses. He said Melo's combination of strength, size, and skill set make it very difficult to keep him from scoring each trip down the floor. What he is hoping for is to throw different looks at Melo to keep him out of his rhythm and to try to work from there. All right, Doris, thanks. And Landry Fields out of Stanford, his senior season, Stevie led the Pac-10 in scoring and rebounding. Yeah, Clark, I think eyebrows raised when the Knicks took him. Uh, how did teams not calculate the right way? How did they miss on that guy? You know what I think happened was he wasn't uh, overly athletic, and teams started to look at what they thought he couldn't do instead of focusing on the things that he could do. Smart, tough, averaged over 20 points a game his last year in the Pac-10, made winning plays at both ends of the floor. I mean, he's at 50% from the field and 40% from three-point land his rookie season. And was an all-rookie team performer, yes, so he was. he's made his case where it counts most between the lines. Here is Hawes, averaging 10 points per contest. Fields gets the reach-in call. That's his first foul. Oceone has checked in for Philadelphia. First Here's Iguodala. He's coming off a 10-point game against the Hawks in Atlanta. Here's Holiday. Chance there to take the lead. Missing. In 2005, with the Phoenix Suns, Mike D'Antoni was coach of the year. The Knicks brought him in to bring some of that winning formula he had in the desert to the Big Apple, and it finally paid off last year. 
Shot's good by Anthony. Defense gave him more than enough space right there. The 76ers trail by three. Now no Sione. Iguodala outside. No Sione with it. Five to shoot. The 76ers need to get off a shot. Anthony is tagged with the reach. That is his first foul of the game. Yeah, Clark, he made the playoffs, and Mike D'Antoni had them playing some good up-tempo ball. Steve, did you like it? Did it fit what they had there? What was your overall feel on what D'Antoni did when he had a full roster? Well, he had a tough job because the roster changed so dramatically with the Carmelo trade. Uh, but I like it. I think uh, the style suits the personnel and vice versa. And I think this has a chance uh, to be a, a very good team in the NBA this year. Now here's Iguodala. Right now averaging 17 points a game. And there's a minute 45 left here in the first quarter. Right up. And Stoudemire, the bucket on the assist by Douglas. Well, and you can't let them get deep position. Yeah, you got to do your work early here, Steve, and you got to be physical with them. Well, once Allen Iverson left Philadelphia several seasons ago, it seemed like the 76ers lost their identity. Uh, but this past season... They started to, to carve out a niche for themselves. They're a young, athletic team that defends, and they play hard together. And when you move out of an era like that, you know, you talked about that, Steve, it, it does take time to find an identity. Clark, you've been through that as well, and you can certainly uh, appreciate what the 76ers are going through. Yeah, they certainly are building a nice identity, and they're basing it on toughness under um, head coach Doug Collins, Kevin, and that's impressive. They're definitely a team to keep an eye on. They're on an upswing, no doubt. It was the Knicks getting swept out of the playoffs 4-0 by the Celtics, but don't think that the series was that lopsided. I mean, those first two games in Boston could have gone either way. Catching up on the changes for Philadelphia. Thaddeus Young, he's checked in for Nocioni. Jody Meeks comes in for Andre Iguodala. And Lewis Williams subbed in for Drew Holiday. Back to that Knicks-Celtics series, Clark. Boston had to come back in both those first two games. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Knicks certainly made it interesting. They yeah. really did. Yeah. yeah, Steve, I know you enjoyed those and watched them. Yeah, those were great games, uh, particularly the first two in Boston. The Celtics had to, to really dig deep to win. And then uh, once it was 2-0, it looked like New York just kind of let its guard down, and the Celtics took advantage. Now here is Fields looking for his first bucket of the game. Stoudemire backing him down. The three is launched. And again, New York with the triple. Well, not the best defensive scheme, and it results in a wide-open look. And here is Williams. Coming in off a 10-point game, his last outing. Defended by Douglas. Here's Meeks. A three-pointer is right on target. And he knocks down a three of his own. And even if he didn't, he just made it personal coming right back with a three of his own there. About three seconds between shot and game clock. It's Carmelo Anthony on the wing. Defended by Young. Let's it go. A shot by Anthony, no good. Well, he was just a little bit off with his mechanics there for some reason. I'm not sure why. Both teams have it going here early and still close to the first quarter. Knicks lead by three. And the defense has been key in building this lead. They've really clamped down hard. They've done a nice job, Steve. I think challenging every shot, a hand up on every shot. Don't go away. Back in just a moment. Tune in next Sunday night. Rudy Gay and the Memphis Grizzlies go up against LeBron James and the Miami Heat. NBA action charges ahead. Don't miss out. And the second quarter getting underway. No team gaining an edge so far. Here's Billups. He had 13 points in the win against the Nets in New Jersey. So with Iguodala sitting on the bench, this is who Doug Collins has out there. Holiday and Meeks in the backcourt. 
Darius Sengaila out there with Young. And it's Spates in at the five. Now here's Douglas. That drops. Anthony's got the opening field goal of the second quarter for the Knicks. The 76ers trail by six. Well, there are a lot of good closers in the NBA, but for my money, Carmelo Anthony is the best guy in the fourth quarter when you absolutely need a bucket. Holiday against Billups. It's Meeks outside. Gets it to go. He's got six. They are absolutely stroking it from outside. I mean, textbook perfect. Good balance, nice high release, splash. And we may have an injury here that does not look good. And first look, I don't know. Yeah, it's tough to tell just how bad it is. For his sake, hoping that he's okay. We're hoping he's okay. The 76ers making a switch right here. Iguodala's checked in. Here's Douglas. Right now averaging seven points a game. Steve just talked about Carmelo Clark as a clutch scorer. Stats back him up. Game on the line. There are a few better in the league in, in doing that. I would put him right at the very top of the list, too. Top two or three because he can get it over you. He can get it around you. He can do it with his back to the basket. He can do it from the three-point line. And he's a really good free-throw shooter. I mean, he is really one of the premier scorers in our league without question. He hangs in there and cashes in on the second chance points. Shots good from Young. Here's Billups, averaging 18 points a game. Now Balk. Kicks to Mello. Six on the shot clock. Finishes at the rack. Anthony's got seven points here in this quarter. Seems to be getting better as this game goes on. You know, even though um, Philly got bounced early by the Heat last year, you have to think it was a very valuable learning experience for that team, especially as young as they are. And the 76ers decide to take their first time out here. Back to what you said, Clark, about the 76ers. With their youth, any playoff exposure is a big boost. Yes. And, and, and Steve... Uh, Doug Collins talked about this. Hey, we're, we're going to get great experience here for this young team. Yeah, mm -hmm. and a lot of their young players got to see a lot of action during that series. And, of course, playing against a great team like Miami, going against the best, uh, there's no better experience for a young club. and let's see how things are going out east in the early season. Taking a look at Philadelphia, right there in fifth position, middle of the pack in the conference. And, of course, the Knicks sitting there four spots below. Well, right now for the Sixers, they've got to be happy with how things have gone for them. I mean, they haven't suffered a deep drop-off, and they're still the good, solid team they were a year ago. Yeah, but they haven't taken a step forward either. And I thought maybe they would. I mean, to me, this has been a little bit disappointing. They're not in bad position I just thought they'd be better, Clark. Catching up on the changes for Philadelphia. Spencer Hawes has checked in for Spates. Brand comes in for Darius Singaila. And Nocioni subbed in for Thaddeus Young. Now here is Holiday. Still looking to get on the scoreboard. Iguodala kicks to Holiday. And Billups oh. picks him up defensively. And so he draws the foul on the shot. A trip to the line to shoot two. How about this, Kevin? Um, just two seasons ago, Drew Holiday was the youngest player in the league and actually had his grandmother living with him in Philly to help watch over him. He's come a long way. The first one falls. And Drew Holiday now living on his own, and he held his own in the playoffs against Miami. Steve, he played well. He did more than hold his own, Kevin. He shot better than 50% from long range, made great decisions with the ball. Uh, he really grew and matured during that series, and I think Doug Collins and the Sixers are absolutely ecstatic to have him leading this club into the future. Well, this is a Knicks team that has been built through free agency and trades. Of course, when you're in New York, you're, in a, you're a very attractive destination for free agents, and that's why they have gone that route uh, rather than through the draft. 
Now here's Brown. Outside Phillips. Over Holiday. Phillips with another miss. Never easy to trade picks away, as you were saying, Steve, but the Knicks, you know, Clark made up for it last year by nabbing Fields in that second round. Yeah, that was a big get. I mean, a really nice second-round pick for him, Kevin. The Knicks didn't draft Tony Douglas, but traded for him cheap, too, so even with moving their high pick, they still added some pretty good talent. It's Donnie Walsh doing a pretty good job. He's huh? one of the best, has been for a long time. Yes, sir. Here's Holiday, averaging 12 points a game. Iguodala takes a three. It's good, the assist that time from Holiday. It's a tie ball game. Here is Fields. And it's Iguodala picking him up. Stoudemire backing him down. From down low, and he finishes on the layup. Stoudemire's got his second bucket of the night. Well, using his height advantage against the much smaller man, that was the right play to make there. Collins has been in the league for a long time, and no matter where he seems to bounce around to, he always finds a way to improve that team's defense. Pause. He's guarded by Williams. Baseline try. Pause. No luck. And the Knicks with possession. A moment for our Gatorade injury report. Hey guys, the head athletic trainer for the 76ers, Kevin Johnson, provided some information for us. He filled me in on the situation. It's a lower back strain, and it has him suffering through an awful lot of pain at the moment. They can only hope that, with it being so early in the season, he'll have plenty of time to fully recover and return in time to still have a major impact. That's the thought process right now, guys. Good stuff, Doris. Thanks, uh, Clark. It's got to be a tough time for him. Yeah, Kevin, you wish they weren't, but injuries are really a part of the game, and, and sooner or later, just about everybody has to deal with them in some form or fashion. Well, hopefully we'll get some good news next time we have an update on it. Clark Moore on Doug Collins. You can expect the 76ers to be a tough defensive team as long as they are under his watch. And, Steve, that's the one thing I think that he teaches as well as anyone is defense. Yeah, no question. His teams always uh, compete at that end of the floor. He's got a great game plan. He understands his personnel, and he puts people uh, in position to succeed based on their talent. Now, winding down, they're going to go for the last shot here at the quarter. Yeah, I like the recognition there. They're going to play for the last shot, just as you said. Outside, Billups, Stoudemire, Brown outside. With one on the clock, it went right down as the buzzer sounded. Well, I tell you what, I don't know how he has the poise to make that shot look so easy. Yep, and that's the most exciting play in basketball, guys. The buzzer beater, unbelievable. Live from Philadelphia, you're watching 2K Sports. And it's a good one going on out in Philadelphia. Glad to have you with us for our halftime show presented by HP. An impressive start for the Knicks. They're hitting the offensive glass hard, working for their second chance points. Our top scorer, Carmelo Anthony. He's up to nine points. Is also working on the other end of the floor. Nice defensive work. And no quit in the 76ers. They came to win. They're looking to climb above 500 here in the early going. They've taken full advantage of their trips to the line, and that's made a key difference. A lot in the NBA to catch up on. Let's check it out as we go around the league. Over at Phillips Arena, it was the Hawks losing to the Nets. Four points ended up being the difference in that one. Joe Johnson leading the team in scoring. And one of the other games that went final today, Toronto ended up with a loss to the Magic at Amway Center. They couldn't get anything going, it seems. And a look here at the other action around the association. Chicago with the lead against the Bucks at Bradley Center. That one's in the third. They're up by eight at the moment. And that just about wraps it up for us here in the studio. Now let's get you back to Kevin and the crew for the second half. Well, both sides have assessed what they need to do over the break in halftime. We'll see now if one can pull out away here in the third. Here is Billups. 
I tell you what, the um, Knicks are not a team that puts fear into you when they hit the road. But they weren't the same pushovers they were in the years past. And on the four for Mike D'Antoni starting the second half. Mello and Amari at the forward socks. Billups and Fields pairing up in the backcourt. And it's Williams at the pivot spot, manning the middle. And they've missed the first three shots of the third quarter. Iguodala outside. Shot clock at six. Three-pointer. Again, Iguodala missing. Brought up the Knicks on the road, 19-22 and 22 last season. Uh, that's a huge leap over what they did in the pre-Amari Mello days when they were uh, really, really struggling on the road. So uh, a big step for the Knicks last season. Let's see if they can capitalize this year and make even more improvement. I love how relentless he is. I mean, he just continues to come at you all night. Brand a screen on Billups. Anthony on the double team. Knocks it loose. On the high post. That's good. Here's Billups. And the Knicks decide to take their first time out here. And this is the first season matchup for them against this 76ers team. And last year, boy, it was fun watching these two teams get together. They split the season series. Very even matchup. Board, a list of the teams that have rebounded the ball tremendously over the last 10 games. Those 76ers in second. Kevin, that's been a nice run lately. They're making a strong effort on the board, and it's working and paying dividends for them. Here's Anthony. Nine points in the game so far, and it's Iguodala picking him up. 18 feet away. Anthony missing again. The 76ers trailed by four. You know, you look at Carmelo Anthony last season left the Nuggets to join Amari Stoudemire in New York and both high scoring forwards. Um, they give the Knicks a formidable one two punch at the offensive end. Now, here is Young down to five on the shot clock. With one on the clock. The shot by Holiday, no good. And Clark, when you look at Carmelo and Amari as a tag team, you know, how do they stack up as a combo? In fact, Steve, let me direct it to you. Obviously, both very talented. Do you like the way their talents combine? Well, I don't think they're ideal, uh, Kevin, because they both need the ball in their hands a lot, and neither one really makes other people better. I mean, they're not selfish players, but they're, they're, they're scorers, and they need the ball to be effective. And so I think it's going to take some time for Amari and Carmelo to adapt to each other's styles and, and to figure out how to play uh, with each other. Timeout called the 76ers. Really good turnaround season for the 76ers a season ago. And I thought one of the reasons they were able to be successful was they established their home court. the 76ers. Williams comes in for Drew Holiday. Ronaldo Balkman is checked in for the Knicks. 
Douglas comes in for Chauncey Billups. Here's Williams looking for his first bucket of the game. Defended by Douglas. And there's the pass to Young. Lock at six. Over Bachman. The 76ers with another miss. And I think the lead they've built here, guys, is in large part due to what they've done on the boards. Absolutely. I mean, they have a plus 10 advantage in rebounds, and they've been in total control of the backboard. And that's the problem when you don't protect the ball. Exactly. When you surrender the ball like that, you put your defense at a huge disadvantage. Now here's Douglas. They set the screen. Anthony up on top, defended by Young. Here is Bulk. And a miss there on the triple. 133 left here in the third quarter. Outside Williams. He passes to Hawes. Covered by Anthony. The shot. That shot's good from Hawes. Oh, just a two-point Knicks lead. That's a nice job of getting the ball in the paint and burying the shot. That's exactly how it's done. Douglas for three. And the Knicks miss again. And it's the 76ers with the ball. Just four points. That's all they've given up here in the second half. They're coming into this game off that recent loss to Atlanta. I was very disappointed in their ball movement, uh, their, their shot selection, their spacing. It seemed like they had no rhythm at the offensive end. None at all, Steve, and in part because they did a poor job of spacing the floor. And when you don't space the floor, it's hard to get shooters open. Williams passes to Hawes. The kick out to Williams. He dishes it to Turner. Williams with the ball. Averaging nine points per contest. Passes it to Hawes. Back and down. Gets the bucket. Eight points for him. Excellent job recognizing he wasn't strong enough to back him down and then took the jumper instead. And here's Douglas. Outside Anthony. Offline with his three. And at the close of the third quarter, still a close game and both teams putting up points in a hurry. It's the Knicks, up by two. The NBA season picks up steam. Kevin Durant and the Oklahoma City Thunder go up against Blake Griffin and the Los Angeles Clippers next Sunday, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Now, while we've got a moment, we're going to send it over to Doris Burke for our Spark of the Game, presented by Sprite. Doris? Kevin, it's the New York Knicks picking up the Sprite Spark. No hiccups in their game plan has everything rolling in their direction. Sometimes things just fall into place, and it looks like it's one of those games. Thank you, Doris. Here is Daniels. Antonio Daniels out there with Holiday. Then it's Young. Then there's Maurice Spates. And it's Igudala in at the small forward position. That's the group on the floor for Philadelphia. Now here is Holiday. And Igudala gets it to go in on the assist by Holiday. Six points for Igudala. What a marvelous job they've done of sharing the basketball. A ton of assists. Well, they know where each other is all the time. They're moving the ball, just finding the open guy. Nobody seems to care who scores. Here's Brown. Anthony backing him down. Goes up. Shot. No good. And the 76ers go the other way. 
Their next game is at Quicken Loans Arena in Cleveland, taking on the Cavaliers. That will be a getaway game for them, a one-game road trip. And Holiday kicks to Iguodala. Shot clock at six. Picked up by Brown. And it's Iguodala again missing. It's been a struggle for him offensively tonight, and they'd love to have his production out there. Holiday against Billups. Mason against Young. Anthony left side. And the shot is good. And the Knicks lead by one. Here's Holiday. Timeout called the 76ers. He's on fire. They needed to put their heads together to figure out how to get the ball out of his hand. sideline with Doris Burke. Thank you, Kevin. I got a chance to hear what Doug Collins was saying to the team. He was trying to keep their energy up, saying, listen, I know you're tired, but you can rest in a few minutes when we're sitting in the locker room with a W. For now, lay it all out there. Catching up on the changes for Philadelphia. Spencer Hawes has checked in for Spates. Rand comes in for Thaddeus Young. And it's Turner in for Antonio Daniels. Now here is Holiday. Great ball movement. And Billups picks him up defensively. Iguodala kicks to Holiday. The 76ers again can't hit it. You know, with the way they've dominated the glass so far, I'm a little surprised it's still a close game. Yeah, you've got to take advantage. I mean, you're getting extra possessions, but you're not knocking down shots. He kicks it to Stoudemire. Outside, Williams. Just five to shoot. New York needs to get off a shot. Phillips. It's hauled in by Andre Iguodala. You know, you see some, some of the inconsistency in regards to his shooting. I mean, that last shot, I think that's preventing him from taking his game to the next level. Inconsistency on that kind of shot. Here's Brand again, Philadelphia. After what was just a horrendous shooting performance in the first half, they finally started to find their stroke. It's amazing to think they actually have the lead here, Clark, given how poorly they played in the first half. They really didn't shoot well, but you know what? They're starting to stick it out. They're finding their way in this game. Time call here. The Knicks decide to talk it over. He's been aggressive looking for a shot, but without much success. It might be time for him to take a step back and look to help the team in other ways. Sixers. Spates checked in for Hawes. And Lewis Williams subbed in for Elton Brand. And a new group in for the Knicks. Jared Jeffries. He's checked in for Sheldon Williams. Anthony comes in for Amari Stoudemire. Andrew Fields checking in for Sean Williams. Roger Mason is subbed in for Bill Walker. Here is Fields. On the inbound. Good defense by Iguodala. 
Tell you what, it seems like all it takes is just a little bit of defense for him to be tentative on those layup attempts. No one near him. The shot by Turner, no good. Knicks trail by three. Outside, Billups. Iguodala against Anthony. Tigers from the corner. The basket good off the assist from Billups. And that's 13 points for Carmelo Anthony. And the 76ers call time here. They're leading by one. 135 left in the fourth quarter. And some changes here for the 76ers. Spencer Hawes has checked in for Spates. Grand comes in for Lou Williams. And it's Young in for Evan Turner. Then for the Knicks, Sheldon Williams checks in for Jeffries. And it's Stoudemire in for Roger Mason. Now here is Holiday. He's guarded by Billups. Now Igudala. Back to Holiday. Whoops, there's the 24-second shot clock violation, so they'll turn it over. You know, sometimes the intensity of the game can lead to brain-neutral plays like that, guys. Time call here. The Knicks decide to talk it over. They trail by one. One ten left in the fourth quarter. Here's Billups. Shoots. And unable there to get the go-ahead bucket. It's a close game here in Philadelphia. Holiday dishes doing it out. Williams picks him up. Six on the shot clock. Back to Holiday. It's over Fields. The shot by Holiday, no good. Here comes Carmelo Anthony. Back to Billups. Anthony against Young. There's the feed to Fields. Stoudemire outside. It's a look. It's off. That's a good shot. High percentage. Can't complain about that one. Phillips passes to Carmelo. Defended by Young. It falls! He has so much offensive imagination. Always seems like he's ready to try something new. Timeout called the 76ers. Guys, what's your take? They don't have enough time here to catch and shoot. Their only hope is to try to tip it in off the inbound pass. That's always a difficult shot. Close game sees New York take this one. It was tight, but they managed to come up with the win. You know, nobody wants to lose a close game, Kevin. It's much better to win those tight ones. Well, that'll do it. For Doris Burke, Steve Kerr, and Clark Kellogg, this is Kevin Harlan saying so long. We'll see you next time.
And as we leave, we give you our Jordan player of the game, Carmelo Anthony. Minutes to come back to the cozy three room flat. <laughs> 